the royal protection. Um, how would you characterize the threats that Meghan and Harry received? Well, disgusting and very real. I've talked publicly for many years about the threat of... Uh, but there were many serious, credible threats against Meghan, were there, emanating from the far right? Absolutely. In this if you'd seen the stuff that was written and you were receiving it, the kind of rhetoric that's online, if you don't know what I know, you would feel under threat all of the time. So you were convinced that there was a genuine threat to Meghan's life on a, you know, on more than one occasion, on several occasions? We had teams investigating it. People have been prosecuted for those threats. Welcome to Majesty's Sussex Report. I'm Antonio, and here we are already in the month of May. Can you believe that? Time just flies, doesn't it? I would say it flies across the sea on what some playfully may call Salty Island or the UK. There seems to be a whirlwind of activity and speculation as news breaks that Meghan and Harry are set to visit Nigeria. The commotion that this has created, it's been just amazing to watch. Harry um, visit primarily for the Invictus Games church ceremony that's going to be happening um, this month has sparked quite the reaction. It, it's, it's as if the media there are experiencing a collective midlife crisis almost. They seem uh, um, lost, almost like teenagers who can't decide whether to hold on or let go. Their reliance on Megan and Harry to fuel tabloid sales and 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 by and by extension, their revenue is more evident than ever. Despite painting them as the villains, these two figures continue to embody the very essence of dignity and sincerity. Qualities one would desire in any royal. Megan, with her super stardust, which is why people like you are so peeved because I'm, she turned I'm, her back on Britain. I'm I understand peeved. we can we can I'm sort out some cancelling for you, Kevin. I'm peeved you know, about her You will actions. recover from this. You why will recover from this. Why doesn't she come back? Why doesn't she come back to the UK and wave to us all? Because she thinks people like Kevin McKenzie are going to be all. Well, I'm entitled that. to a view. But that's true, though, and isn't so it? are you. You're Don't entitled to a view, but that shouldn't stop her coming out and giving her views to our. Yet they were cast out deemed not good enough um, by those very institutions. Now, sort of caught in their contradiction, the media um, oscillates wildly. One moment pushing Megan away, the other, um, the other moment questioning why she isn't there, why isn't she coming? It, it certainly reveals a fundamental loss of direction and credibility, a situation where they can fool the public only for so long. Indeed, there will always be those who cling to the fabrications and fantasies peddled by so-called royal experts and, 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 and insiders and all of that. However, anyone I repeat, anyone with a bit of common sense, anyone capable of critical thought can see the truth plainly laid out before them. How long can one hold on to illusions when faced with the reality? Moreover, uh, 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 amidst these, uh, uh, amidst this, 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 this sort of, um, Strategic launch, I would say, of of um, American Riviera Orchard, and it's <laughs> now very famous strawberry jam has been nothing short of phenomenal. It underscores a clever and effective approach to branding that seems to leave the antiquated strategies of Buckingham Palace far behind and and anything you know the royals in the uk can 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 think of doing 
right? As they attempt to catch up, their efforts appear almost comical to, to, to any critical observer. So I was thinking what they have said many times, right? That the firm, it's, 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 it's a family business. It's, it's a company. So let's, let's look at it as a company, as a business and, and their branding. The British monarchy, also known as the firm, in all tents and purposes, is a business. And we've been told many times that it is so. A business. Now, if we are to look at the whole family and this as a family business and the firm, then we should be able to look at it as any other business. And look at its branding, for example, and be able to address a critical issue that challenges the very core of integrity and values in the business world. It is a story of building brands, not just any brand, but those built on the fragile foundation of falsehoods, secrecy, and the suppression of authenticity. Imagine a brand that appears gleaming on the surface, promising values of trust and innovation, representation of a people. Yet beneath that lustrous veneer lies a reality distorted by deception and a culture shrouded in secrecy. Such brands often resort to undermining those who dare to bring truth and authenticity to light. This is a this this is not merely a a failure of individual morality, but a systemic collapse that can poison the entire corporate culture. As we move further into the twenty first century, a brand that does not evolve with the times, that does not genuinely embrace diversity in, in thought and personnel, is a brand that is setting itself up for, for its eventual failure and demise. Diversity is not just a buzzword to sprinkle in mission statements and marketing materials. It is an essential ingredient for innovation, resilience, and relevance. Yet, they are those who, under the guise of embracing diversity, do the exact opposite. They isolate. They discriminate. They push out those who are different who challenge the status quo with new perspective and ideas. Are you getting my drift here? Consider the, the, consider the plight of a diverse individual who joins such a brand, hoping to contribute to its growth and to foster change from within. Instead of being welcome, they are met with hostility. Their ideas are laughed at, and their presence is treated as a threat rather than an opportunity. This is not just a failure to adapt. It is an active destruction of potential. This approach to business is not sustainable. It breeds resentment, stifles innovation, and ultimately leads to a decline in both moral and market value. You know what I mean by market value. We live in an era of unprecedented access to information where authenticity is more valued than ever. Customers, employees, and partners are drawn to brands that stand for truth, transparency, and genuine respect for diversity. 
Building a brand on falsehoods and secrecy is like building a house on sand. It may stand for a time, but eventually the truth will come out and the foundations will crumble. The damage done by such practices can be irreversible, not just to the brand, but to the individuals who believe in what it is supposed to support or represent. Let us choose a different path, and we know which path that is. Let us build a brand on the solid ground of authenticity. We know what brand that is, inclusivity and transparency. Let us not be afraid of diverse voices, but instead see them as our greatest strength. It is time for a change. Time for us to lead with integrity and time for us to show the world that truth and honesty are not outdated concepts, but a cornerstone of successful, sustainable brands. I humbly present to you, Archwell. Just the 